On July the 6th, 2024, in Springfield, Illinois, a tragic event unfolded that would shock the nation and serve as a stark reminder of the unseen battles raging around us. It all went wrong in under 30 seconds, shot in the face by Sangamon County Sheriff's Deputy Sean Grayson. In the blink of an eye, a cry for help turned into a tragedy. Imagine calling 911, desperately seeking safety, only to have your life ended by those sworn to protect you. Sonia Massey, a 36-year-old woman, called 911 just before 1 a.m. to report a suspected prowler outside her home. Uh, somebody keeps outside my house. Uh, uh, please, uh, is this your car over here? Little did she know that this call for help would lead to a devastating outcome that would expose the complex interplay between human actions and spiritual forces. Two deputies from the Sangamon County Sheriff's Office responded to Massey's call. Upon arrival, they found a black SUV with broken windows in her driveway. The situation seemed routine at first, but as we'll see, it would quickly escalate into something far more sinister. When the deputies first knocked on Massey's door, it took her three minutes to answer. Her initial words were telling, Don't hurt me. This statement, seemingly innocent at the time, would later prove to be tragically prophetic. As the deputies entered Massey's home, they found her in a state of confusion. She repeatedly told them she needed help and made several references to God. The deputies, trying to complete their report, asked for her identification. Massey sat on her couch, rummaging through her purse, while the deputies grew increasingly exasperated. The situation took a turn when one of the deputies, Sean Grayson, noticed a pot of water boiling on the stove. He commented, we don't need a fire while we're here. We don't need a fire while we're here. Massey immediately got up and moved the pot near the sink. At this point, there seemed to be a moment of levity, with Massey and Grayson sharing a laugh over the steaming hot water. However, what happened next would change everything. Unexpectedly, Massey said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. These simple words, often used by us Christians, seemed to have triggered an alarming response from the deputy. He immediately became aggressive, threatening Massey and drawing his weapon. He yelled at the woman, pointing his weapon at her. I mean, think about it. No one would have thought that a simple prayer would turn him into something no one had seen. Unfortunately, the situation escalated rapidly from this point, but the woman, clearly shocked by his aggression, attempted to de-escalate the situation, ducking and raising her hands. But it was too late. The police officer standing in the living room and separated from the woman by a counter fired his weapon three times. Unfortunately, she lost her life. The truth is, there is a very high likelihood that Sonia Massey felt something wrong with the officer right from the very beginning. The fact that the very first words that she spoke to the officer asking him not to hurt her means she could perceive in her spirit that something wasn't quite right around him. Secondly, the fact that she randomly said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, was another proof that she must have sensed something dark within the officer. The Bible says, Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. This means sometimes it is very possible for you to be around someone, but your spirit man senses that something is very wrong with them, prompting you to pray. I believe this was the case for Sonia. Everything she said clearly proves that she felt that the police officer in question carried a negative energy within him, and even though we couldn't see it in the physical, it was very obvious that she saw it and felt it within her spirit way ahead of time, which is why she rebuked him in the name of Jesus. Her rebuke was not necessarily towards the officer, but rather it was directed at the spirit within him. His physical attack on her was simply a manifestation of what was going on behind the scenes. This is why I always tell Christians never to play with prayers, because it can happen to anyone. In the moments following the incident, the body camera footage reveals a chilling exchange between the police and his partner. God damn it. You good? I'm good. You good? Yeah, I'm good. When his partner suggested getting a medical kit, the officer discouraged him, saying, You can go get it, but that's a headshot. There's nothing you can do, man. I'm gonna go get my kit. Now, headshot, dude. She, she's done. You can go get it, but that's a headshot. As Massey lay dying, the police officer attempted to justify his actions to responding officers, claiming... She said she was going to rebuke me in the name of Jesus and came at me with boiling water. She said she was going to rebuke me in the name of Jesus and came out with boiling water. That's what all this is. I was standing right here. However, the body camera footage, 
does not support this claim. Now, as we reflect on this heartbreaking event, we must ask ourselves, what unseen forces were at play that night? Why would the mere mention of Jesus' name trigger such an intense, violent reaction? This response tells us something profound about the nature of the battle we face as Christians. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, the Apostle Paul reminds us, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This verse illuminates the true nature of the conflict we witnessed in that tragic moment. While on the surface, it appeared to be a confrontation between a citizen and a law enforcement officer, the spiritual reality was far more complex and sinister. The extreme reaction to Sonia Massey's words, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, reveals a battle that was not of this earth. It was in fact a spiritual battle manifesting in the physical realm. The name of Jesus provoked an outburst of anger and violence. This is precisely what we often see in instances of spiritual warfare. In the book of Mark, chapter 1, verses 23 to 24, we see a similar reaction to Jesus' presence. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? This passage demonstrates how the presence of Jesus, or even the invocation of his name, can provoke a violent reaction from evil spirits. In the case of the police officer, it's possible that the sudden anger and aggression he displayed were not entirely his own, but rather the manifestation of a dark spiritual influence that had taken hold within him. This incident serves as a stark reminder of why we consistently emphasize the reality of spiritual warfare. The enemy can use any vessel that is exposed to his influence. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, we are warned, Be sober, be vigilant because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. The real force that pushed the officer to such a violent act was likely not merely human anger or prejudice, but a spiritual entity reacting to the power in the name of Jesus. This is why we must always be prepared and prayerful. I've always said being born again does not mean the enemy will never attack you. I often feel sorry when I hear Christians relax themselves and say the enemy will never attack them. Jesus and the disciples never taught this. The Bible tells us we are in a spiritual warfare. This tragic incident serves as a sobering reminder that spiritual attacks can come in many forms and from unexpected sources. The enemy may use individuals in positions of authority, those sworn to protect, or even those close to us. This is why we must always be vigilant and discerning. However, it's crucial to understand that this doesn't mean we should be afraid to call upon the name of Jesus. On the contrary, we should be emboldened to do so, knowing the power it holds. In Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 to 11, we read, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The name of Jesus is our strongest weapon in spiritual warfare, but we must wield it with faith, understanding, and the backing of a life submitted to God. James chapter 4 verse 7 instructs us, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. As we take a look at this event, there are three critical points we must underscore for every believer. First and foremost, you must always strive to be in right standing with God. This is not just about avoiding tragedy, but about being prepared for eternity at any moment, because you never know what might happen in the next minute. As James chapter 4 verse 14 reminds us, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapour that appeareth for a little time, and then vanisheth away. Our lives are but a vapour, and we never know when our time on this earth will end. The most tragic outcome imaginable is not a physical death, but a spiritual one, passing from this life without having given your heart to Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 16 verse 26, Jesus poses a profound question. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? 
Nothing in this world, no amount of wealth, power, or earthly success, can compensate for the loss of one's soul. This is why it's crucial to ensure that we are always ready to meet the Lord. We must live each day as if it could be our last, not in fear, but in joyful anticipation of eternity with our Saviour. To be in right standing with God means to have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour, to live a life of repentance, and to walk daily in obedience to His Word. The worst thing that can happen is for you to leave this world when you are not in right standing with God. That would be a double tragedy. In the case of our sister, we do believe she is with the Lord. Secondly, every believer needs to have the spirit of discernment. Had this woman been more attuned to the spiritual realm, she might have sensed the danger and avoided calling for help that night which ultimately led to her demise. Discernment allows us to sense when to avoid situations that could escalate into spiritual confrontations. In Hebrews chapter 5 verse 14 we read, But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Spiritual discernment is not a luxury for the Christian, it's a necessity. It grows as we mature in our faith and consistently apply God's word to our lives. We must seek the Holy Spirit's guidance in all we do, as John chapter 16 verse 13 promises. Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. By staying closely connected to the Holy Spirit through prayer, worship, and meditation on God's Word, we develop the ability to discern spiritual realities and potential dangers. This discernment can literally save our lives in situations like the one Sonia Massey faced. Thirdly, we must realize that what happened to her is not an isolated incident, but part of a larger spiritual war against Christ and His Church. This type of spiritual attack could happen to anyone, anywhere, at any time. As Peter warns us in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. The enemy is actively seeking to destroy believers and hinder the spread of the gospel. This is why we must remain vigilant and prayerful at all times. As we continue to pray, let us look to the hope of Christ. God bless you. Thank you for watching. If you love our video, please feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel.